Hi guys, welcome to another Learning Electronics Repair video. I made a video a few days ago and I built a ring tester. This is a little device that I could use to test transformers. So I was testing this transformer. This is from an old ATX power supply. And what I was doing with this bit of wire was simulating a shorted turn. So if you have a shorted turn in a winding of a transformer, it will basically stop the transformer from working because the shorted turn effectively becomes another secondary connected into a short circuit load, and that just kills the transformer. It may cause the transformer to burn up, it may blow whatever's driving the transformer. If it's a switch mode, uh, transistors, MOSFETs, it might blow the fuses, or it may just not give any amount of output, really. I'll link that video from this one, it's quite interesting if you want to see how the ring tester works and how it tests the transformer. But you guys probably know, I like to do things the ghetto way sometimes. It's occurred to me there might be a very simple way to test these transformers for shorted turns using it's a kind of ring tester, but that only has one component, yeah? So in this video, I'm going to try to see if I can test whether this transformer has a shorted turn, which I'm simulating, using one component. And that component is a relay. So here we have a 12 volt relay. It has a normally closed and a normally open contact, and this is what we need. It has six pins, but it looks to me that it may be a double pole or they may be connected together. So let's have a look first at our relay and let's see how it is actually constructed inside. So just using the multimeter. So here's the multimeter. Just on continuity range. Let's see. These contacts at the end will be the coil and they should have some resistance. A few hundred ohms maybe, yeah, 275 ohms. And then, are these connected together? No, they're not. So this is probably two switches inside here. Each one's a changeover. So most likely the middle one connects to here. Yeah, that's the normally closed. This is the other pole. And this is the normally open. So what we need to use is the normally closed connection. So that's these two. I'm going to do something I did when I was a kid, basically. I did this as a teenager, probably my young, early teens. So I thought it was quite funny to take a relay like this, and we don't even need to solder any wires, I don't think, on this. We have the connection from the relay coil, and we connect one end of the relay coil to the normally closed switch. The other end of the switch we connect back to the power supply. So when we put the power on, the relay will open the switch. Yeah. But once the switch is open, there's no power to the coil, so it will close the switch, and then there'll be power to the coil, so it will open the switch. So this effectively should rattle backwards and forwards, making a loud buzzing noise. Let's see if this still works like it, like it did when I was a kid, yeah? Let's try it. Here is the power supply, we're going to use this one, the little digital one, 12 volts, 5 amps, it seems to be very good to be quite honest, so set it to 12 volts, close enough, I think when I was a kid I used my Scalectrics transformer to do this, or car batteries and things like that. So we'll connect the relay, one end to the power, and we'll connect the other end to the power, it should do as I said, yeah, okay. Of course, this probably doesn't do the relay contacts much good, but well, as a kid, I thought it was great. And I thought it was even more great when I discovered that if you did this and grabbed hold of it, you could get a shock from it. <laughs> and that's how I learnt about back EMF. At the time, I didn't know what it was. Later, I read books and I found out what it was, but that's how I discovered about back EMF. Okay? And let's have a look on our voltmeter, and we should be able to see that. 
Of course, doing this might not do the power supply much good either. I don't know. I didn't worry about such things at that age. So there we have it running, yeah? Let's look at the voltage across the coil. Well, it's really some strange voltage. Killed one camera or another. Yeah, the instrument camera. It's obviously generating a lot of interference and noise because it's killed the instrument camera. Let's try it again. Okay. I'll put it onto AC. Let's see if we see any voltage on this. We might not because the power supply might effectively be damping this. Let's have a look. Here we go. Uh, nothing across there. How about across the switch? Okay, you can't see any voltage. But well, that's not what I'm totally concerned about in this experiment. What I thought is, if we take our transformer and we connect it in series with this, as long as this has a fairly low resistance, this relay should still chatter away. And not only are we sending AC, if you like, or spikes through the relay coil, we're also sending them through the transformer. And it might be, if we stick it, say, on the primary, and then we short this turn, and we measure the voltage on the secondaries, we may see an output voltage. And then when we short the turn, it might go away. That's my theory that I want to test. So let's see if we can do it. To do this, we're going to need a few more crocodile clip weights. Let's try this uh, camera. Another one, obviously, doesn't like something with this going on and off. So... I'll put the short on the shorted turn and let's connect our thing. Volts AC, what do we get? About 8, 7.98, okay? We'll disconnect the shorted turn, what do we get? About 11. So it does have an effect but it's not giving us that much difference probably that you could actually say it's a good or a bad transformer let's try putting a diode in series with the output of this transformer and then using DC so plenty more crocodile clip bleeds I am sure uh, this is going to be the output of the transformer this is a 1N4001 diode so we'll connect that to there and then I need one more crocodile clip lead to connect it back to my meter. Okay. So there we have the diode in the circuit. Right. So without the shorted turn, what's it do? It gives us about 1.3. Yeah, 1.3. Let's put the shorted turn on. Okay, now what's it do? Which well, actually gives us more. So that's not giving us any sort of conclusive thing, really. I've just realised now, yeah, I have it the right way round. I'll just make sure this test lead is good. Let me just, uh, I'm just holding a crocodile clip lead together to be sure. 2.1. 1.8. I think I may have a dodgy crock clip lead. Give me a moment. Okay, I've sorted that out. Let's try it again. So, we'll take the shorted turn off. Yeah. Let's go. About 1.1. Put the short on again. Now what do we have? 1.0, so there's very little difference. We can try one other thing with this experiment, and that's just to rewire it so we use the other relay contacts to switch the voltage from the bench supply directly through the transformer. 
<laughs> Let's see what it thinks of that. Well, guys, our one component transformer tester has now become three components. So I have a two ohm resistor in series with the primary winding of this transformer. Then it connects through the relay and back to the power supply. So this is just to limit the current that will flow through the primary. If this effector was zero ohms at 12 volts, two ohms is about six amps, but I don't think it's going to draw as much as that to be quite honest. I've now got the diode 1N4007 connected to the secondary of the transformer. So we're on DC volts. Let's switch on and see what happens. And hopefully the camera won't freeze. Uh, well, it's drawing 3.3 amps. That hasn't frozen yet. And we have... Come on, we have voltage in the thing. That's for sure. It's fucking like crazy. Make sure we get a good connection on here. No, we have the meter doesn't like that very much. That's just... I think I have a bad connection on this crop clip with. Let's go again. Well, it doesn't want to give a stable voltage, is the truth of it. It's possibly because all these DC spikes make it think like it's a uh, some sort of AC signal. Maybe we need some sort of capacitor as well across the meter. We probably don't need a very big one. This is a hundred microfarad 25 volts i hope that's enough let's try and stick this uh, the positive onto our probe let's do this the ghetto way okay so just wrap the wire around the probe okay the negative needs to go to the black probe which i have to effectively well probably another crop with our clip with actually just make sure it's a good one. One resistance range. Yeah, the lead's good. Okay, back to volts range. Okay, put that on there. And now we have four components in our transistor tester. Can we test the transformers? Well, it's giving about 8.8, 9 point, you can see. Uh, gradually charging up. Okay, about 11 and a half. Let's put a shorty turn on the transformer. I'll probably have to short out the capacitor to get rid of that voltage. Okay, I don't think I've knocked the wire off. Let's put a shorty turn. So we're at about 11.7 volts. 12 volts nearly coming out of our transformer. That's quite impressive. Let's... Uh, Put a shorty turn on it, yeah. Will it give us an obviously lower reading? Let's see. Four volts. I think maybe the value of this capacitor is too high. Maybe I should use something a bit of a lower value than that. Okay, let's just short it out. Let's try a smaller capacitor. Let's try one of these. These are 2.2 microfarad, but they're like high voltage ones. 400 volt, but I'm not too worried about that. Let's try connecting a small capacitor. And this is where I find yet another crop clip lead. Is it a good one? From here to here. Yep. Okay, so we can put our capacitor. 2.2 microfarads. Let's see if this gives a better reading. Yeah. This is the diode on here. I'll draw this on a piece of paper if it works. In fact, I'll draw it on a piece of paper even if it doesn't work. Yeah. Volts. Short out the uh, the capacitor. Right, there's no charge in that now. Okay, let's take the shorted turn off. 
Yeah. Let's see what we get. Much higher. Yeah, 24, 25 and much more stable. So 25 volts out of the transformer without a shorty turn. Again, we'll have to short the capacitor to get rid of the stray voltage. Okay. 25 without. What's it like with a shorty turn? Oh. It's definitely lower, but unfortunately, it's not giving us any particular indication that you can actually reliably say that's a bad one. Unless. Unless. If we have one shorted turn on the transformer, and I put a second shorted turn on the transformer, do you think maybe like it won't be any worse with the second one on? Because it's already got a shorted turn. Well, there's one way to find that out. So the idea is that we measure the output from the transformer, we put a shorted turn on, and if it doesn't go any worse particularly, then it's already had a shorted turn. <laughs> what do you think? Here's another bit of thin wire. I should be able to get this around the transformer. Yeah. Okay, let's see then. So let's try this theory. We have no shorted turns, okay? What do we get in the way of voltage? I'll just again short the capacitor just to uh, make it zero. We need the zero button. Oh, that's another component. Oh dear. 24, 25, 26, 25 to 26, okay? We know this one brings it down to about, is it 12? See? Yeah. Has it stabilised? 17. Yeah, it stabilised at 17, which is up and down a bit. So that does that. So what happens if we put another one on? Another shorty turn. If this has no effect, but on its own it gives about 17 volts, so two shorty turns don't make any difference and one does, I think we can probably say that's a good indication. If it goes worse again, well, yes, it, it reads different with a shorty turn, but it doesn't give it any meaningful reading. Okay, two shorty turns. Let's see what we get. Short the capacitor. Yeah. What was it reading? About 14, 15, 6, about 16. Yeah, set this one off. Short it. Go. About 16 was just the one. 17, yeah. 18, set, yeah, almost 18, then it started to come down. So just one gives 18. Just the other one. See where it settles down. 17. Yeah. And now it's kind of like. It's going to stop. 18. Yeah, it stopped at 18. Yeah, with just that one. And what does it do at both? If this gives about 18 as well, then it proves the point. Okay, there's a second shorted turn. 
short the capacitor let's go Sixteen. Sixteen point seven. So it only makes a difference of about one point three volts. Whether we have one or two shorted turns makes about one point three volts of a difference. Whereas if we have no shorted turns, yeah, it makes about. 8 volts of difference. Right, let's put that on a bit of paper. And let's see how it works. So, the first thing we need is, was a relay. I used a 12 volt relay. I'm sure you could use some other voltage relay, but it seemed to work rather well. So, 12 volts in, 12 volt relay. The relay is a double pole double throw so it has one contact like this this is a normally closed contact and it has a normally open contact like so and then the other pole was the same thing again so we had one normally closed contact and the normally open one The normally open contacts we're not using. So if you could find a relay that was normally closed and went to open, when well, energized, that would work as well. But they're probably going to be changeover ones that you find that are normally closed. Well, you may find one that's just normally closed. This end of the relay coil goes to one of the contacts, and the other side of the normally closed goes to five, goes to ground. Yeah, no volts. So that's how that's wired up. When we put 12 volts on, the relay opens, disconnects the coil, so it closes, so it puts the power back on, which opens the contact, and the thing rattles backwards and forwards. Yeah. The other contacts, I use the normally closed, but I guess you could use the normally open. This end went to the transformer I wanted to test okay. and the other end of the transformer winding went via a power resistor to 12 volts I use a 100 watt 2 ohm and after that test that got pretty hot when I moved on my desk I actually almost burnt my fingers on it so that was getting quite hot yeah. the other end of the relay contact went to zero volts ground yeah. that's how it was connected up and then my test meter was connected to the secondary of the transformer I'll draw it where it should be. No, I'm going to draw it this side. I've got a bit of space. I connect it to the secondary. And from here, I used a diode. 1N4007. Well, I think just about anything would do. This is a 1 amp, 1000 volt. I then connected a capacitor this was 2.2 microfarad capacitor mine was a high voltage one but the first one I used was a 25 volt and it was fine yeah. even though the voltage seems to be at least 25 volt and from here plus minus is the meter so that's the circuit that's what I had components one is the relay, two is the diode, and three is the capacitor. Component number four on the deluxe version would be a switch. 
so you can short out the capacitor to discharge it otherwise touch the wires together touch your meter leads together yeah that's the deluxe version yeah so 12 volt double pole double throw relay one and four double oh seven or similar 2.2 microfarad capacitor i'd say 50 volts at least uh, or similar deluxe a switch single pole single thread touch button too yeah there you go guys method of operation connect your transformer measure the voltage on the secondary or one of the secondaries try the different secondaries if you want make a note of the voltage yeah so that's the first thing you do then put one shorted turn of wire around the transformer okay short the turn and measure the voltage if you get a large voltage drop i was going from 25 26 to 18 so i was losing about 30 percent so it was dropping by about 30 percent with a shorted turn on that told me the transformer was good and i just put a short on it if the transformer already had a shorted turn internally and you put a short on it i suspect well mine went down by well, how much was it it was a long time ago it seems now i'll put it in the comments on here a couple of volts yeah i think it was like one volt so if you put the shorted turn on and it drops by about a volt or so then the thing's already got a shorted turn yeah there you go guys you guys are love to get into the comments below about that one yeah even hackaday might like me again this time all right guys let me know what you think and i will see you all soon on another learning electronics repair video Ciao for now, guys.